Yo, g'day guys and girls. Today we're looking at the simplest and easiest way to stitch a panoramic together in Lightroom with a little bit of post-production in Photoshop. So stick around and roll that intro. G'day guys and girls, thank you for joining me and really good to see your smiling faces. It's summer, it's the happy time of year, it is so good, but photography is such a difficult time. So today we're delving into the laptop and looking at some Lightroom on how to join and stitch panoramics together. And also going on further to that, looking into Photoshop to do some tweaking in the images. But on this channel, I'd love to do plenty of tips, tricks and reviews, everything's landscape photography and travel related. But mainly, we love to get out in the field and take images like we are going to edit today. So if that interests you, please watch this all the way through and after, don't forget to drop below for future content. But if you haven't watched the recent images that I've taken on this episode, this is episode five of a six stage module on how to capture the perfect image, if there is one. So we went through and done the apps, location scouting, reviewing, then we went out and done the images last week and today we are editing the image that we have captured. So we're gonna dive in to Lightroom first and look at the images that we've already taken. So I've already put the images into Lightroom and I have got all hard drive, SSD drives here for my workflow, which I'm gonna do on a completely separate vlog because this hardware is just as important as the camera and photography gear that we use. But sometimes, well, most of the time, very overlooked. I know for me, for four or five years, I overlooked this, so I'm gonna dive into it on a separate vlog. But you can see here, I've got all the images laid out. Now, on this morning, I took 87 images, I think, in total, and I've cut it down to just three panoramics. So I've got here a blue hour, so to speak, shot, and, it's, and you can see it's all six stitch there, just going into the sunrise, pre-sunrise occurring, and then getting on to, there's an image there that I'm actually not gonna use, this one here, but then this is the image that today we are going to look into. Now, my computer is going to struggle today. I don't care if it's got 32 gigabyte of RAM, i7. We are screen recording and going through huge files today. So right now, I know I'm just gonna hold down Shift on the first image, clicking it, go to the last image and you can see it's gonna highlight all of them together. Now from here, because we've done everything in the how to share panoramic image, when we stitch this, it should come out absolutely perfect. Now that's the easiest and simplest way to get it right in camera, come into Lightroom and let it do all the work for you. So you're gonna hold down Control M for a PC, for a Windows PC. This is gonna take a long time to do all the loading. So all the loading today, I'm just gonna to skip towards like this. So you can see, we've gone through and shot the panoramic. And now, because when we shot the panoramic, we've done everything locked down, focus, white balance, shutter speed, we shouldn't have any issues. And this is why you can see throughout the whole complete series that it is done perfectly. Because we got everything right in camera, so please make sure you go over and dive into that vlog quite a lot. But already here, I always, always, always make sure I've got it on perspective because that is gonna give the best depth of field to the image. So when we shoot a single image, the depth of field is inbuilt into the barrel of the lens, what we do with focal range, aperture, all this stuff. But in a panoramic, we've got mountains in the background, valleys, city in the foreground, well, a village in the foreground. So we, don't, we want to put it on perspective and give the best we possibly can. But you can see up the top here all the white. Now this is due to basically not having things like nodal slides and everything. I don't want to dive into that because it's a little bit more technical, but also how level you've got your tripod. Now for a seven stitch pano, this is pretty damn good, I must admit. So I'm just going to click auto crop here and you can see it's got a crop for me. We're going to crop later because I said I wanted to get into that two by one. But you can see if I just change these previews here, you're gonna see a completely different type of image. Now you might like this type of image, but I always go for a perspective because I love natural looking images. So for me, I always keep it to perspective and let 
my work or my images tell the story. So we're just gonna sit there and quickly go merge. And once again, I'm gonna speed it up and you can see it's already loaded after quite a long time. We've got a monstrominous image. So it's reading 16,243 by 6,240. That is an absolutely huge image, like massive image. So now we wanna go into the develop module. Now I don't do a lot of post-production in Lightroom. I do things such as presets, but I'm gonna to touch on that in a completely separate vlog. But because we lock down all white balance everything, this is where time consumption is at a minimum. That is why I love getting everything in camera because one, we're in a beautiful location, and secondly, we don't wanna be spending hours behind here. So now we can go through and adjust things such as the white balance, just tweak it a little bit more, and then what we want to do now is obviously you can see in the shadows. Now this is very important in post-production and when shooting images, you can always recover shadows better than highlights. So that's why you can see I've focused with my shutter speed on just capturing the top tip. So this tip here of the mountain, making sure I haven't overexposed that. So when we come to situations like this, I do not have a problem of getting the image back. So I'm just gonna go through now and make some adjustments to the image that I want to do. And all my stuff is pretty universal, which I go through in Lightroom. So I am gonna tweak a few things and I'm reading the histogram up the top here. So I don't wanna blow anything out and I am gonna just quickly go through and do a few things. And this for me, I know, because I've done it so many times, that I just want to get many, many things correct to take it into post-production. But this is where I spend a lot of my time, two by one. I spoke a lot about this in the review stage that I wasn't happy with the crop that I was getting. So now I've chosen two by one, and I want to go constrained to image. So that is going to not let me expand outside the image that basically that I haven't got information for. So constraint to image, and you can see if I try and drag this down, it just doesn't go. Now we want to muck around with getting the composition correct. So I wanted the church, I wanted the mountains, and I wanted the village. I spoke about that in the second module, that they were my three elements that I wanted to do. Everything around and outside of that was pretty much out of my control, but they were the three fundamentals that I wanted to capture for the image. So you've got an image like that, which I'm very, very, very happy with actually, it's very beautiful. It is a bit dominant to the right hand side because the mountain's not perfectly lined up with the mountain over here, but nothing's perfect. We're gonna try and make it work. As I said in last week's vlog, it's probably one out of 10 times that I am gonna go out and look into this image. So you can see over to the right hand side, I've cropped that tree out. I've had to shoot over on both sides to make sure I've got enough information in camera. But that, I'm pretty happy with actually. I'm, I'm actually very happy with that. Just gonna go through and have a look at a few things. Now in Lightroom, I always, always, always go and bring sharpening down because it adds an overall sharpening. We don't wanna introduce noise in Lightroom. We're gonna do that. Uh, we're gonna introduce sharpening in post-production in Photoshop. So now we don't have to lens correction. If your camera doesn't have lens correction inbuilt like the X-T3 does, make sure you go down and do the lens correction and from there, I'm pretty happy. So you can see I don't do a lot. So all this stuff here, I don't do unless I'm gonna do a preset for one of my blogs or anything like that. But this is a portfolio image and I wanna spend a lot of time on minute little perfections basically. I wanna make this as perfect as possible. So now I'm gonna right click, export, and this is part of my workflow I'm gonna take you guys through. I'm just gonna come up here and do, we're gonna edit in Photoshop. So now we're gonna jump over to Photoshop. Now I wanna talk about my workflow in Photoshop. So we're gonna hold down spacebar, right click, and go to 200%. Now what I'm doing here is checking sharpness, the stitch of the panoramic, the stitch of the seven images, sensor spots, because I've already had some sensor spots on here that I've went and cleaned. But mainly we're checking sharpness of all seven images, not just the image that we are doing right now. And I went through quite heavily on this, looked at noise, looked at color rendition, contrast, because as I said, guys, this image I wanna print, I wanna sell this as a fine art print, so it has to be spot on perfect. 
I would spend two to three hours on just editing this image on one session, come back later and do another session. But right now I wanna to go to Filter and Nick Collections, Color Effects Pro. This is an add-on for Photoshop. If you haven't got this, you have to add on more and go into do contrast control, all this sort of stuff. But if you haven't got this, it does have to be a paid subscription for this, but I highly, highly recommend it. So you can see in Color Effects Pro on the left-hand side, I've done all my saves of what I use pretty much day in, day out when I edit. First one I'm gonna go through and do is the pro contrast, because we wanna get as much contrast back as we can because we shot in raw with no polarizers, no filters, so we couldn't cut through that mountain haze. So I go through and do pretty much standard adjustments for pretty much all my workflow, and I just make minor tweaks from there. So 42 and 12 is my base go-to, and here we wanna just get color control contrast, and just see what it does at about 50%. It does give a bit of red, red tinge back in it, so I'm gonna put about 35%. Now, I wanna go in to polarize, because I said we couldn't use filters. Well, maybe sometimes we could add in a filter, but I didn't want to in this situation because it can do crazy weird things in the sky. But here, I do wanna boost it up quite a bit because you can see, yeah, exactly what I thought it was gonna do. I'm just going to toggle that on and off and look into the valleys here. See how you've got this white haze here? Obviously that's a lot further away in reality. So it should be deeper, darker. There's no sun getting into this image. So if we just toggle that on with a polarizer, look at that, huge, huge difference. It gives pop into the top of the mountains with that red hue, which we haven't got enough hue back yet, but mainly those mountains. Look at those valleys. So, so much better. Now, I'm gonna stick that around 100 because I don't wanna overdo it, but obviously this polarizer in post-production is not gonna be the same as getting it done in camera, but we couldn't do that because of filters. Now, just a few quick things done in tonal contrast, and here I never wanna to introduce too much tonal, tonal contrast because it introduces so much noise, and we don't want that. So that's pretty much me done. You can still see it's a very flat image as far as no color, no vibrance to that, but we're gonna get into that in a later part of it. So now I'm basically gonna go through and do a few things and then get back to you in one second. Okay, so I've gotten to a point now where I'm very happy with it, and I know the image is gonna turn out the way I want because I've got enough rendition out of everything that I wanted. But I'm gonna roll back and show you what I've done. Sharpening is the first one. I always do sharpening in Photoshop. Lightroom has gotten much better, but it completely depends on what type of image you want. So for me, this is a portfolio, one of the top 10 images that I wanna take. So I'm gonna spend two to three hours on it. If it's a mediocre image that I'm still very, very happy with, I'm still gonna go through this, but not as fine a detail. So it's maybe gonna be one hour. As I said before, if it's images for Shutterstock, blogs, it takes me literally one or two minutes just from presets in Lightroom. But here, you can see anything in black is 0%. Anything in white is 100%. Therefore, if we had gray, it would be 50%. So, Right now, this is the denoising out of Color Effects Pro. So anything in white is being denoised, obviously the sky. Therefore, the complete opposite, anything in white now is being sharpened. Now this, I spend a lot of time on getting correct because the bit that I unfortunately can't show you, my power tip for editing, this has a lot to do with color difference in the image. So. That is the first one, then the color balance. Obviously, you wanna go back and get things white. So if we hold down spacebar again and go to 100%, that church in the bottom left-hand corner has to be white. Why does it have to be white? Because it's white in real life. So you can see there, it's got a bit of a yellow tinge to it, but I'm gonna get rid of that in later steps. So we've done some curves to just get rid of, the, get some of the highlights and shadows basically just popping a little bit more then the color enhance because we didn't have a polarizer to pop those greens out. 
So we've gone through and used a foliage in ColorFX Pro, just popping those greens out, just adding a little bit more vibrance into the image. White neutralize it, making sure the things are specifically white. And you can already see in the snow at the top, it's very yellow, which it shouldn't be. That will be fixed. Now I'm gonna literally snap my fingers and jump into the last stage because unfortunately, I don't wanna show you this large stage because it's my real power tip of getting the perfect image done in post-production. So there it is. This is the final product of this image. Now I added this image yesterday and then even this morning when I got up, I went and had a quick look at it again and done a few minor details. And that is the great thing about my workflow. You can just go in and tweak little things. And also that's why I do a lot of my portfolio editing in Photoshop because the color separation, you can fight two colors against each other to give that little bit of a pop to the image that is 100% needed. Now, everyone's workflow is completely different and this is my workflow. I, I want you to 100% understand that. But you can just see, this is the last image. This is where I left you guys. Just clicking this last button, you can see all through here, this is basically what I've went ahead and done giving you the final result. It is completely different. It is giving a much better scale to the image, giving much better depth to the image, and obviously color and saturation to the image. So this is my workflow from start to finish. You can see a lot of my initial work is done in camera. I make sure it's level in camera, white balance done in camera, and obviously we adjust white balance in post-production also because we shot it raw, but by locking it down in camera, gives us that perfect image from left to right to join together. Then you do your minor adjustments in Lightroom. Also, if you wanna do presets and that sort of stuff, of course you can. You can muck around in Lightroom and get your workflow done that way. I'm gonna do a complete separate vlog about presets in Lightroom and the advantages of them. Time is the biggest one. This here, three to five hours, I'm gonna spend on getting the perfect image and what even is crazy, I'm gonna head back out in a better time, better location to shoot this image. So I'm gonna to have to do the workflow all again. But that is learning the craft, loving the craft, and just seeing results like this and seeing how you can improve on the final perfect image. So get everything right in camera, get into post-production, and time is the biggest thing that you need. But let me know in the comments below, guys, how do you join your panoramics together? Obviously, if there was different things in the image, the parent would change completely. But how do you join your parameters together? How do you do your editing workflow? Is it similar to mine or is it completely different to mine? Love it or hate it, everyone's got their own type of workflow. Let me know in the comments below what yours is. But today, we are done. We are onto the final stage of next week. We are printing. We are grabbing that physical image in our hand, looking at it at 100% with our eyeballs. I'm so happy for that and so glad to release a little thing next week, which you guys are going to love, hopefully. I'll see you next week. Thank you for joining me today. Ciao.